Hey, what's happening, guys? Uh, yesterday's video on this op amp Smith trigger oscillator, you guys seem to enjoy, but you want a little more information on how it works. So I thought today we would talk a little bit more about how it works. If I go the right direction with the camera, there we go. All right, so let's start out with how are we going to determine the period of oscillation? How are we going to determine the, the frequency? which we talked about yesterday, which is 1 over 2 RC. But the frequency relies not only on RC, but also on the feedback, which we'll call funny looking B. So how are we going to figure that out? Well, it's not too hard. So I hope you enjoy this little mathematical discussion of how it works. I have to define some constants for us here. And let's start out with our feedback is going to be R2 over R1 plus R2. And that is our voltage divider. That will be our feedback ratio. And we also need to know that V out is equal to V sat. And our V ref is equal to V out times R2 over R1 plus R2. That's our, our feedback. Remember that? And that will also equal our feedback V sat. So once we know all of these three things right here, well then we can say that our positive V ref equals our positive feedback V sat over our minus V ref equals our minus feedback V sat. So those are the things that we need to know in order to figure everything out. So now let's consider the two waveforms that we're dealing with here. The first one is our capacitor charging and discharging. This is the voltage of the capacitor. I know it's not to scale. So this is our positive V ref. This is our negative V ref. Now hopefully if I can draw this to the <laughs> same time constant. You get the idea. This is our V out. So this is positive V sat. And this is negative V sat. Okay. So basically all we're saying here is when the capacitor is fully charged, we are at the high point of our square wave. When it is discharged, we are at the low point of our square wave. Voltage of the capacitor, voltage out. Our capacitor is our ref values, and our square wave points are our saturation values. So we have our formulae, and we know what the formulae references. So now we can figure out our period of oscillation. And for that, we need to remember our feedback of R2 equals R1 plus R2, our basic voltage divider stuff, right? Then we need to know time, which is going to be 2 RC LN times 1 
plus our feedback over 1 minus our feedback. And that's going to give us our frequency of 1 over t, okay? All right, now we have all the math done, and we can figure it out. So we need some values. R1, R2, R, and C. So we'll try and make this easy here. We'll say R1 is 35K, R is 30K, RC is 0 0.01 microfarad. Whoops, shoot, Paul. 0 0.01 microfarad, and our R is going to be 50K. Okay? So now that we have that, we can say our feedback equals 30K over 35K plus 30K, giving us 0.462 and our time is 2 times 50k times 0 0.01 microfarad times ln which is what 2.717 and that is going to give us 0 0.001 times 1 or 1 millisecond. And then, of course, our frequency is 1 over 1 millisecond or 1 kilohertz. So, that's a lot of math. But that's why when we charge and discharge this capacitor through this voltage divider with this uh, feedback resistor, we end up with a one kilohertz square wave when we started out with the basic one kilohertz sawtooth wave. So now you know not only how to make the circuit, but how to get the frequency you want out of the circuit, why it does what it does. So I really hope you enjoyed that. If you did, give me a thumbs up. Feel free to comment, share, and hey, don't forget to subscribe. Big thanks to all the patrons. Do not forget the ANANG 8008 giveaway coming on September 3rd. If you're a patron, do not forget the ANNQ1 giveaway coming up on July 14th. That's it. I'm out. Peace.